Welcome to EPG Party Shala. I am Ravi Kori Setter, Senior Fellow, Dr. V. S. Vakankar, Archaeological Research Institute, Bhopal. In the subject of Indian culture and paper 2 on pre and proto historic cultures of India, in this presentation we will be focusing on the Neolithic culture of southern India based on series of excavations that have been carried out at a large number of Neolithic sites distributed in the southern states of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu. The aim of this particular presentation is to understand the origins of Neolithic way of life in southern India, the origins of uh, uh, domestication involving, dom involving plants and animals and distribution of Neolithic sites across the uh, southern Indian region as well as understand the chronology of uh, Neolithic culture in southern India. As we can see from this map, four major biogeographic uh, zones have been identified based on systematic study of plant and animal remains from uh, regional Neolithic sites distributed in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent, particularly at the site of Mahergar in the Balochistan region, in western India at a number of sites in Saurashtra, Gujarat, and eastern India in the Ganga Valley uh, and southern India in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and uh, Tamil Nadu. Here we will be focusing on the results of uh, archaeological investigations at a number of sites and a general outline of the development of the Neolithic culture is being presented on the basis of a series of slides that will be shown in the following. So the area covered by southern Neolithic province is shown here. The largest number of sites are known from Andhra Pradesh followed by Karnataka and then Tamil Nadu. Very few sites are known from Kerala region. To date, as many as 900 odd uh, Neolithic sites representing various phases in the development of Neolithic culture have been uh, identified in these regions. The earliest sites ha happen to be located in the mid-southern uh, Deccan region, uh, in the region between uh, the southwestern Andhra Pradesh and mid-eastern Karnataka. Uh, in, including the districts of Bidar, Gulbarga, Mubhubnagar, Karnul, Anantapur, Bellari, Raichur, Chitradurga, etc. In this slide, the map is focusing on the river systems uh, with River Krishna at the center and the rivers like Bhima, Tungabhadra, Malaprabha, Ghataprabha and further southwards in, uh, in the Tamil Nadu region, the Kaveri River uh, are shown. The numbers uh, shown on the map also indicate those Neolithic sites which have been investigated during the last 50 to 60 years. And as we can see, well investigated Neolithic archaeological sites are located in the region of Sharopur Dob between the Bhima River in the north and Krishna River in the south, in the, in the Raichur Dob between the river Krishna in the north and Tungabhadra in the south. Beyond these two Dobs, Archaeological sites of the Neolithic period are found scattered uh, further northwards and southwards of this region. But the greatest density of sites are found in the mid-southern uh, Deccan region, uh, in the Doab regions and further east of uh, these two Doabs in Andhra Pradesh, particularly in the districts of Mabubnagar, Karnul, Anantapur and uh, Chitradurga. Majority of the Neolithic sites that are known from southern India are associated with granitic Inselberg uh, plateau surfaces. It's not only on the plateau of these Inselbergs the settlements were located. Uh, over a period of time, the settlement also expanded lower to the lower down the hills and expanded onto the uh, flat plains in between two Inselbergs or on the pediment itself. Most of these Neolithic sites have given evidence of distinctive type of stone tools which are known as polished stone axes. They were made from the dolerite rock which occurs in the vicinity of the Neolithic settlements. And the best use of uh, availability of dolerite dikes uh, in the granitic hills was made by the Neolithic folk who established the first villages in the region. Apart from being the uh, first settlers in the region, they were also um, they were also, their subsistence economy was governed by domestication of uh, uh, plants and animals. And there is abundant evidence of uh, the domestication of cattle associated with the early phase of the Neolithic in this region. 
what we see in this photograph is a series of examples of ground stone axes. In the following, we will also be showing uh, the, the processes involved in procuring uh, the raw material and uh, subjecting this particular raw, mater raw material to uh, various stages of fabrication resulting in the formation of a ground stone axe. Neolithic sites are also known for their distinctive burial practices where when the dead were enclosed in large burial urns and these urns were enclosed um, uh, in the pits and then they happened to be buried under the floor of the houses. In addition to that, some of the excavated sites have given evidence of house floors with post holes indicating the nature of uh, structures or huts constructed by these people. These Neolithic sites also have clear evidence of artistic activity as revealed by the presence of paintings and rock bruisings on the surface of the granite boulders and also uh, what we call um, um, grinding hollows or at various points on the plateau surface where the Neolithic village was uh, located. These hollows have now been identified as those places where the stone axes were ground to smoothen the surface of uh, the axe as well as the uh, grains which were processed for uh, consumption. In addition to that, we also have waste products resulting from manufacturing activity, particularly stone axes. In addition to that, we also have evidence of burials wherein not only the dead were buried in urns, but also stone structures were also constructed during the later phases of the Neolithic in southern India. And these have been called megalithic structures. Some of the Neolithic sites were large, were centers of large scale manufacturing activity relating to production of stone axes. At Hiraguda in the Sanganakal Kupgal complex of hills, which is one of the largest Neolithic sites in southern India, we have encountered a major lithic workshop. As we all know, Neolithic period is associated with the first invention of Neolithic stone tool technology. And uh, the Neolithic period, uh, throughout the Neolithic period, we have clear evidence of the continuity of uh, the Neolithic stone axe manufacturing activity. At Hiraguda, a dolerite axe workshop uh, has been uh, identified dating back to about 1400 to 1300 BCE. This site, although represents later phases of the Neolithic, is the best example of a Neolithic stone axe factory. It is situated on top of a large hill plateau um, and then what we see here is circular uh, pattern of stones arranged uh, on the plateau surface and each of these circular features are asso were associated with uh, the axe manufacturing activity. Excavation at one such circular feature has revealed uh, a thick deposit of waste products lying over the uh, bedrock. At some places on the same hill, we also see the existence of an ash mound prior to the coming up of a stone axe factory at this particular site. In addition to that, each of these um, circular features were also associated with blocks of granite uh, with, uh, with grinding grooves and cupules. These grinding grooves were extensively used for uh, sharpening the edges of the stone axis. This site gives us clear examples of uh, various stages in the involved in the production of stone axes. Hiraguda example is the uh, most recently well documented Neolithic stone, fact, stone axe factory in southern India. On the same large hill at, in, at Sanganakalu, we also have evidence of a large dolerite dike cutting through the hill and the the manner in which uh, the dolerite dike was uh, mined by the Neolithic uh, stone axe manufacturers is shown here. Some of the mine pits are very clearly seen on the surface of the uh, dolerite dike. On the other hand, we also have extensive uh, waste products accumulated on the surface of uh, uh, the hill top. And in addition to that, the large uh, granitic boulders on the, uh, at the base of the hill also have clear indications of uh, grinding of grinding and uh, uh, polishing activity. In the bottom uh, part of this particular slide, we have a series of grooves uh, 
indicating the manner in which the edges of the stone axes were sharpened. And the waste products which were uh, left behind also lie you know, scattered on the surface of the uh, plateau here. In this photograph, we have two distinctive sections, one revealing the hoof impressions of cattle, another side revealing the representation of cattle on the granitic boulder surfaces. Cattle and hoof impressions go together with the Neolithic culture of southern India. A large number of Neolithic sites are associated with ash mound formations and these ash mound formations were deliberate accumulation of cattle dung which were episodically set on fire. As a result of periodic burning of ashes, these at one at the same place over a long period of time, these ash mound formations have taken place. They are distinctively associated with Neolithic agro-pastoral communities, that is one thing and they are also now being considered uh, to represent some of the ritual, rituals performed by the early agro-pastoral communities in this area. The consistent co-occurrence of both Neolithic settlements and ash mounds have led to identifying the Neolithic culture of southern India as representing an ash mound tradition. As many as 200 odd Neolithic ash mound signs distributed in the central part of the uh, southern mid-Deccan uh, are a distinctive feature of the Neolithic settlements in this region. They range in time from 3000 BC to uh, as recently as 1300 BC. During this time period, the Neolithic culture has been subdivided into uh, three phases, phase 1, phase 2 and phase 3. These hoof impressions which are shown here come from an ash mound site called Uthnur in the Mahbub Nagar district of Andhra Pradesh. The rock bruisings uh, with bull imageries are very common to all the Neolithic sites which are located on tops of uh, uh, granitic hills. And it appears that the bull imagery played an important role in the rituals performed by these communities associated with agro-pastoral way of life. In addition to uh, dominant presence of stone axes, workshops, rock bruisings uh, and other things, there are minor antiquities uh, indicating the presence of variety of beads made from variety of precious and semi-precious stones. These kind of beads are common to um, Neolithic sites in this area and they have been reported from uh, a large number of sites and a special effort at uh, procuring raw material suitable for making beads from jasper, agate, carnelian, steatite uh, are very very um, common in this area. At some of the sites, large quantities of such remains have been recovered, particularly at Sanganakalu, Kupkal hill complex sites, a uh, large number of such beads uh, made from a variety of precious stones have been documented. In addition to that, uh, various stages in the manufacture of stone axes is also uh, graphi graphically uh, described from the evidence available from these sites. At later stages in the Neolithic, we also have evidence of uh, use of copper, though in small quantities. There is occasional presence of gold as well. In this particular site, re referring to the remnant of an ash mound on Chaudama Gudda at Sanganakallu uh, represents the location of an ash mound not only at the base of hills but also at various points along the hill slope. Owing to extensive granite quarrying activity, the original ash mound has been uh, destroyed and only part of it survives here. Uh, the upper part of the ash mound is vitrified horizon and this vitrification has occurred because cow dung was subject to uh, burning at very very high temperatures. So as a result of high temperature conditions, the silica uh, got fused into the cow dung and as a result of that, a vitrified horizon um, which is hard uh, has developed in the ash mound. As a result of this, the ash mound also has uh, survived for a couple of thousand years. As, men as mentioned earlier, the bull imagery is most common at a large number of uh, Neolithic sites in this area. This is a distinctive variety of bull which is known as Indian uh, uh, Zebu uh, 
with long horn and prominent hub and so on. And this, this imagery is prominently uh, seen at a number of uh, uh, locations at Sangankal Kupkal uh, Neolithic complex. Presence of ringing rocks is another distinctive uh, component of the landscape associated with Neolithic sites. Here we are looking at a block of dolerite which has a series of cupules along the edge of this block. And these cupules, if they are tapped rhythmically, uh, they generate uh, a musical gongs. And perhaps at the perform during the time of performance of rituals, these boulders with these cupules were uh, su subject to use for generating musical gongs. And these are also the blocks of dolerite, which were also a major source of uh, raw material for manufacturing stone axes. In order to describe the characteristic features of a stone axe factory, we have to ha identify certain features peculiar to a factory. Here we have examples of a dolerite outrock from which blocks of dolerite were detached and then they were subject to modification. During the course of modification or preparation of the block for making a hand axe, the waste products get accumulated on the surface. The intensity of uh, manufacturing activity is revealed by the thickness of the waste products lying on the surface here. At the same time, when the stone axe uh, was to be uh, completely uh, finished in terms of uh, smooth surface and sharp edges, we also have evidence here in the form of grooves on the granite boulders and also uh, waste products and unfinished ones and those uh, pieces of dolerite which were defective were discarded. All of them lie at the site where manufacturing activity took place. So here, in the, normally in the context of a factory site, the well-made and well-finished stone artifacts were carried away uh, from the site of manufacture. At the site of manufacture, we, what is normally left behind is waste products, discarded ones, and uh, procurement and processing activity evidenced by the debitage and other associated products, including the um, evidence for grinding and um, polishing of the surface of the stone axis. This slides gives you an idea of the type of houses were, which were built by the first settlers at during the Neolithic times. Most of the houses that were built were circular on plan with wetland and dob structures and the post holes that have been seen at a number of uh, excavated uh, sites uh, indicate the use of bamboo and other varieties of plant material for constructing the huts. We already discussed about the presence of hoof, hoof impressions of cattle in the ash mounds. This picture of an ash mound at Kupkal clearly tells us that this is a prominent uh, landmark on the surface um, of the earth near the Neolithic sites. And in such ash mounds, there is evidence of uh, cattle penning activity. At sites like Uthnur and Kupkal, series of uh, investigations have been carried out in order to understand the processes involved in the formation of uh, ash mounds. It is uh, very clear to all archaeologists that these ash mounds were a uh, product of deliberate accumulation of cattle dung which was set on fire uh, episodically. Most of the ash mounds that, uh, that were distributed across this landscape have suffered considerable damage. At some places, the ash mounds have survived because of the presence of um, religious shrines uh, on the summit of these mounds. Otherwise, even such mounds would have been uh, brought under cultivation and leveling of the landscape. Several of these ash mounds were excavated. The Kupkal ash mound, Utnur ash mound and ash mound at Palawai uh, in Anantapur district was also excavated. Now this particular slide gives us a clear picture of various stages of the formation of the ash mound. These ash mounds have a life history ranging in time from 100 to 150 years and in some cases some of the ash mounds have a life history of about 200 years. Recent investigations and dating of the ash mound formation has been made possible because of the availability of dating methods as well as suitable material for dating. Uh, the ash mound formation. Another major excavation of an ash mound uh, after the 
excavation of Uthunur in Andhra Pradesh was carried out at the site of Budi Hall in the Hunske Valley um, of Karnataka. Here, the site is associated with uh, a, a series of ash mounds as well as a, a regular Neolithic settlement. The excavators have been able to identify uh, ash mound and village as well as a butchery floor. Uh, this particular butchery floor has given evidence of uh, uh, large scatter of uh, uh, animal bones with cut marks and that has been uh, a clear evidence of the activity performed by the Neolithic community at this particular site. The, this particular slide uh, tr reveals the various stages in the way in which uh, stone axes were manufactured. Initially, a block of dolerite was procured that was subject to pecking. As a result of pecking activity, most part of the outer skin of the dolerite um, has been removed. Subsequently, a rough triangular shape was achieved by removing more, more flakes uh, with deeper uh, scars uh, left behind on the surface of the dolerite. Subsequently, um, uh, the grinding, the, this, this piece was subject to grinding on the granitic boulder surface and that led to uh, removing the deep scars and uh, achieving some kind of a smoothness on the surface. Further grinding and polishing was carried out and the final product is shown uh, at number 6 which has overall a smooth surface and a sharp cutting edge. Uh, this cutting edge was achieved by grinding in the grooves that are shown in the previous slides. Polishing of the body of the stone axe, stone axe was carried out on the boulder surfaces on tops of the hill uh, at the site of manufacture. Here there are three stages in which the wear of the surface where the grinding was carried out is shown. Depending upon the intensity of grinding that was carried out at a particular spot, we can see the hollows developing on the boulder surface. Mesoscopic photographic studies have helped us understand the manner in which the granitic boulder surface were subject to grinding and polishing. This is a close-up view of the grinding grooves, V-shaped grooves where the edges of the stone axis were polished. So far we have discussed uh, the material, material culture evidence that, that is seen at a number of Neolithic sites in southern India. But the most important aspect Neolithic uh, culture is the domestication of plants and animals. Which were the animals domesticated by these Neolithic com communities? Which were the food crops uh, that were cultivated these, by these Neolithic communities? Uh, Neolithic way of life is clearly um, associated with the earliest um, effort by human ancestors at domestication of select type of animals and select plants, which were locally available in the environment. Their adaptation to that particular environment is revealed by the presence of these domesticated plants and animals. For example, in the context of Southern Neolithic, for a very long time it was thought that here in the early stages the Neolithic communities were basically pastoral nomadic communities. But in recent past, reinvestigations at a number of Neolithic sites has given new insights into the agricultural practices of uh, these early Neolithic communities. Here we have clear evidence as shown at the beginning um, uh, that w there are four major biogeographic frontiers uh, in the context of Neolithic culture of the Indian subcontinent. Southern India happens to be one of those biogeographic frontiers where we have independent evidence of the development of agricultural way of life during the period from 3000 BCE onwards. Southern Neolithic archaeobotanical research has been able to identify staple food crops which were cultivated by early Neolithic communities in this area and during the course of time food crops that were introduced into this area have also been identified. Here we have recurrent food plants, domesticated seed assemblages based on cultivation in the peninsula region. Native South Indian suit of crops included Sataria verticillata, which is known as bristly foxtail millet, Brachiaria ramosa, which is also known as round top millet, and pulses such as horsecram is known as Macrotyloma uniflorum, and moon bean, that is Vigna radiata. Examples of these uh, plant varieties are also shown on this slide. They are considered 
the earliest uh, types of food crops cultivated by the Neolithic people. Before the introduction of larger millets from outside uh, this particular region, the local small millets of these two varieties and pulses such as horse cram and mung bean were cultivated by the Neolithic uh, communities in the southern Deccan region. Because of the presence of this evidence, it is possible to identify southern Neolithic province as an independent center of Neolithic agricultural origins. So based on the distribution of ash mounds, presence of uh, uh, sites across a large landscape and uh, expansion of this, these settlements eastwards and westwards as well as in the southern direction towards the uh, Tamil Nadu plains, uh, regional variation in the Neolithic uh, um, culture has also been identified based on the study of material culture remains. In this slide, uh, against the early domestication of um, smaller millets and pulses such as horse gram and uh, green gram, uh, by about 1900 BC, we have the introduction of wheat and barley. This was possible because of development of small scale uh, irrigation uh, developed by these uh, communities. So wheat and barley are basically winter crops which were introduced from into the Indian subcontinent uh, from the south some from northwestern Indian subcontinent uh, via the northern Deccan. By about 1500 BC, uh, African crops such as hyacinth bean, uh, hyacinth bean, parallel millet, pigeon pea, and chickens were also gradually introduced into the food economy of the later Neolithic uh, phases in southern India. Hyacinth bean is African in origin. Similarly, pearl millet is also African in origin. Pigeon pea comes from um, uh, southwestern uh, Varissa and chicken from northern India were introduced. So during the course of the Neolithic, from about 3000 BCE to 1900 BCE, the early phase was characterized by domestication of local plant foods and from 1900 BCE onwards, we have the introduction of crops of Southwest Asian origin as well as African origin. By about 1300 BCE, fruit cultivation also became a common practice among the southern Neolithic communities. By about 900 BCE, um, finger millet that is ragi from Africa was introduced into southern India along with oil seeds like linseed, flax and fiber crops such as cotton were also cultivated. But this is the time period when uh, the Iron Age uh, began to take its shape in southern India. In this slide, based on a series of radiocarbon dates that we have obtained from uh, a series of excavated sites in the recent uh, past, has helped us organize the data in a, an absolute uh, chronological framework. The Neolithic begins around 3000 BC and continues to till about 1400 BCE. Now during this time period, the archaeological uh, evidence from the excavated sites has been organized into three distinctive phases of ash mound tradition representing the Neolithic uh, period in southern India. Neolithic phase 1 is uh, bracketed between 3000 BCE to 2200 BCE. Neolithic phase 2 has been bracketed between 2200 BCE to 1800 BCE and Neolithic phase 3 is bracketed from 1400 BCE to the beginning of uh, megalithic tradition around uh, 800 BCE. This time period uh, specifically refers to the ash mound tradition because during the course of these three phases of the Neolithic, southern India, uh, the ash mound tradition continued in southern Deccan region. In summary, the archaeobotanical research, archaeozoological research, as well as study of material culture remains from across the Neolithic province in southern India has helped in organizing um, the way in which the Neolithic culture developed in, in the semi-arid tracts of southern India during the time period from 3000 BCE to 1300 BCE. It has been also uh, uh, possible to identify this region as an independent center of agricultural origins during the Neolithic period. For more details, see the e-text. Thank you.